Today we are going to look at a lens design specifically for those who haven't got a budget but still want to shoot long. This is the Samyang 300mm 6.3 mirror lens. When I talk about budget, this is very serious stuff. Of course, you know, you want to save some money from your pocket. You can, yeah, use it on something else. Uh, but yeah, if we're considering a 300 millimeters focal length, there are a few options, but yeah, let, let's look at the Olympus lineup first. Um, for example, there is a 75 to 300 millimeter zoom lens, which is a very, very popular, uh, like a beginner level long tele lens. Uh, it's, it's actually quite cool, quite flexible, as you can imagine from a zoom lens. Uh, then you can go up a little bit, uh, something like this. This is a very, very popular in the most of the Olympus user will have one of these. This is the 40 to 150 2.8 Pro Zoom. Very rugged built, very nice. And of course, with the uh, latest uh, MC20, the two times converter, you've bung it together. You will achieve the 300 millimeters focal length, which is awesome. But then you are looking at something like 1600 quid. Uh, that compared to the, you know, the other uh, beginner level zoom lens I mentioned about, you can get about 450, 500 quid, depending on where you zoom, uh, shop it. Uh, then of course you have the top, top, you know, 300 millimeters pro, the F4 pro, and that is over 2K. So it's expensive. The only reason is because not many people would use that sort of focal length, it's very long very uh, uh, restrictive uh, you know you can only use it for certain things um, yes of course there are Panasonic options as well but you know I'm not very familiar with their, their products there but in Tracy's does have the 100 to 300 zoom which is kind of equivalent to the 75 to 300 millimeters from the Olympus lineup they kind of competitive between each other so their performance are very very similar but yeah if you don't want to spend any of these budgets over 400 quid then this Sam Yang could be the solution because this thing only costs about 250 quid, maybe even cheaper, depending on where you find it. 3,000 miles from home, trying to say that I will get there soon. 30 days I walk down this way, singing my madness to the moon. You yeah, for 300? This is ridiculous because like, you know, even just a little bit of movement. It's like it's almost like swaying about things we don't see. I asked it, How do I know which is the right way to go to get me home? So, before I go into the detailed review of this particular lens, and please consider subscribing our channel by clicking the button and also enabling the bell notification so you know when our new video is coming out. So, here it is. This is the Samyang 300mm 6.3 mirror lens. So when I say mirror, this is actually not a traditional optics that you will find. If you're not familiar what uh, mirror lenses are, you can actually Googling it. Uh, so in short, it's basically using mirror reflections rather than actual glasses elements itself. Um, you can kind of imagine in a normal lens situation, so when you have different uh, kind of elements inside, different glasses in between, and uh, letting lights pass through to create the focal length or effects that you like or rendering, um, that this is completely different. This is a pure mirror that actually reflecting the images in front of the lens and bounce it back into the sensor. Um, that is more or less what it is. And uh, But yeah, if you want some very definitive definition of what mirror lens is, you can actually Google it. Uh, but anyway, so the, the mirror lens was a very, very popular option back in the 70s and 80s for the same reasons, because to get a tele lens, it could be very costly and very expensive. And uh, so by comparison, a mirror lens can be very, very cost effective.
So let's start with the positive. Actually, I already mentioned most of them. First of all, is the price because at around about 200, 250 pounds, this is actually very, very, well, no, I wouldn't say cheap, but value for money for a 300 millimeters focal length lens. So it's actually pretty decent. Um, yeah, it's definitely saved you some bucks and then uh, compared to, you know, like all the other options that I mentioned earlier. And then it's the size and weight. First of all, it's the size. So yes, this is the size. This is what is light mounted on an M1 Mark II body. So it will look very, very similar if you have a Panasonic G9 or GH5. Uh, you will feel almost the same. But if you have a slightly smaller body like the uh, the M5 Mark II or the EPL series or EM10, um, you will find it a little bit on the big side. But don't forget, this is a 300 millimeters equivalent focal length. Well, not equivalent, equivalent 600. Uh, so 300 millimeter focal length, this is actually very, very tiny. Then it's the weight. Then again, uh, on the M1 Mark II body, it actually feels quite balanced. I think because of, you know, the bigger body and the bigger grip, and then when you mount it together, it feels almost like the 25 millimeters 1.2 Pro lens. Um, so I, I do find it quite comfortable to hold it all day long, so it's not a bad thing. And uh, yeah, I think generally it's very good. Build quality, it's not bad for a cheap lens, and then uh, it's metal with rubber rings on it. And uh, overall, the turning, uh, focusing turning is actually quite smooth and quite well damped. Um, overall, I think it could possibly take some beating. Just not sure, because this is not my lens. Lost track of the forest to the trees, forgot what I was chasing. Spent so many nights living out at sea that my heart is gone vacant. And everybody who was close to me all stayed on dry land. So now I'm driving back on in the state west. I just gotta feel something. Here comes the negatives. Well, I shouldn't say negatives, I should say compromises because at the end of the day, this is a mirror lens. It's not a traditional lens element based design. It's yeah, it's just basically a bunch of mirrors inside this little tube here, reflecting lights, bouncing up and down before it reaches the sensor. So that's the problem. Right, because of that, you will get much softer images. So it's not sharp by any means, and no matter how you look at it, no matter how much you sharpen it in post, you will not get a pin sharp photo that you will experience in modern day designs. Um, so that is definitely one of the biggest downside of a mirror lens is just just not very very sharp and second is the bokeh quality uh well this is the more like a marmite thing you if you either hate it or love it because the design again because you can see this little black disc in front of it and uh, it's because it's what it is it will have always have this ring kind of thing at the back instead of bokeh board you have a ring so you can have lots of rings dotted like around the entire frame which can be very confusing very messy very i wouldn't say ugly I mean, if you like that sort of thing it can be quite creative so speaking of creative you can actually utilize that effect for some yeah pretty amazing stuff and uh yeah like i said hate it or love it and third is contrast well this thing again because of the mirror design you have lower contrast images. Uh, it may not be a problem in today's modern digital world because you can actually crank up the contrast and saturations in pose. So yeah, to a certain extent, it kind of uh, removed that problem of, from a mirror lens design. Um, in the old days though, however, is a, is a much bigger problem because you have fixed film stocks uh, characteristics. So the contrast level and saturations are fixed by whatever film you use. So you couldn't do too much to it. Uh, but in today's digital world, yeah, kind of, but yeah, just don't expect a very sh uh, a kind of punchy uh, image straight out of camera if you're using JPEG. So you remember to shoot in RAW so you can actually control that uh, much, much better in post. Fourth is aperture. So this guy is fixed at 6.3. Well, there are a couple of downsides there. First of all, yeah, you can open it wider. That means that it's not very good at low light situations uh, and you have to crank up the ISO to compensate. And again, you cannot stop down either. That means that uh, when it's too bright, uh, there's not much else you can do. You, can, you cannot stop it down further. And also depth of field because of the fixed aperture. That means, yeah, there's not much you can do about depth of field. You cannot have it deeper or shallower. Uh, everything is fixed so yeah you, you just have to live with it basically um, then the next thing is the menu focus well yeah this thing is like I said it's actually quite nice to feel in terms of menu focusing action 
But then again, if you are not a very proficient manual focusing guy, you may find it a little bit of problematic uh, thing to adapt to it. Even with the peaking, at 300 millimeters, this is very long, and then that means the uh, the critical focusing is very very narrow. And uh, you even if you're just swaying in and out just a little bit, you'll find your shot uh, your shot not sharp at all. Yeah, even though yeah, it's not that sharp anyway. But yeah, you know what I mean. So you can't get that focus. <laughs> and then um, so if you want to use this for some sort of sports, forget about it. You know, you, you just can't do it because the focusing throw is quite long. So uh, it, it it can never track subject that well. But having said that, for movie shooting, it's actually not too bad unless they're moving ultra quick. Um, then lastly, weather sealing. So this guy is not weather sealed at all. Even though it's built with metal and then it looks kind of rugged, but yeah, if you shoot in the heavy rain, it will survive because there's no uh, electronic components inside, so it will not die. But if water starts seeping through the gaps, that will be a problem for you in the future. Uh, if you don't drive the lens or drive off completely, you may find little worms starting wiggling around inside. So yeah, that may not be a very, very uh, pleasing sight. Before I give you the conclusion of this particular lens, let me highlight a few things to you guys. So first of all, this is a 300 millimeters focal length lens. That means it's seriously long. If you haven't used one before, this can be a very, very tricky thing to learn and master. Even with the strong IBIS of the E1 Mark II or in fact the E1 X, you will find it very difficult to control and master that sharp shot that you want to achieve uh, because at 300 millimeters, any sort of slight movement we will create a lot of camera shakes and what it means is if you look through the viewfinder you find this jittery imagery everything uh, regardless whether it's EVF OVF you know it doesn't really matter it's just very very tricky and uh, and that also means that you need to use a relatively fast shutter speed a minimum of one five hundred of a second maybe even one eight hundred of a second to get a decent sharp shot uh, for that matter you will need a higher ISO to compensate the 6.3 aperture. Speaking of aperture, and uh, this is a fixed thing that like I mentioned before, uh, but you know, you have to consider this is actually not that slow by any means because most of the longer focal length lenses out there are usually 5.6, 6.3 and f8 lenses. And then, uh, yeah, if you look at the, the lower end uh, Olympus 75 to 300 zoom lens, that tops up about 6.7 aperture. And even with the 40 to 150 2.8 Pro lens, once you mate it with the MC20 converter, that will become a 5.6 so that is not that much faster than this lens here unless you're paying over 2k for the 300 millimeters f4 pro that's when you get a slightly faster aperture um, but having said that you know it's, it's not too bad not too bad at all so my conclusion do i like it do i recommend it Actually, I say yes, because it's a very fun lens to use. If you, if you don't use a 300mm focal length lenses a lot, and you just want to explore this option every now and then, occasionally, just to get that reach, this is not a bad option at all. You know, like I mentioned, if you like art, if you like creating that sort of artistic look, all these ring things going around for that particular rendering, the mirror lens is the only option and uh, yeah, it, it's actually cool. If you like that look, certainly this is a highly recommended lens. At, at this price, I certainly would pay one just to play around with. So uh, yeah, there you go. Hopefully you enjoy this particular video and don't forget, don't forget to subscribe and click that button there, enable, enable the bell button and feel that vibration in your pants. Yeah. Until next time though, see you soon. Ciao. This is the Samyang 300mm f3.6 3.6, 6.3 ah. So what I meant is... Okay, uh, okay.
uh, you can start up with the 75 to 100 no, ah, 75 to 300 the 300 milli, milli, uh, 300 millimeter ah. <laughs> I can't say the word today Hot. yeah a thick Oreo cookie oh <laughs> Uh, the F4, uh, 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 just look at the 75 to one, not 150, I keep talking about 150, damn it. It's a little bit soft at the uh, 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 folk, uh, because this is a mirror lens by the end of the, uh, uh, one more time, one more time. Okay. This is a mirror lens, not a traditional <laughs> at the end of the day, this is a mirror lens. It's not a tra traditional. <laughs> but the Olympus 75 to 150, if you want to get the 300 meter. Right? Again! I would do it again! That will become a 5.6. So that isn't exactly that much faster than this lens. Say, come on! <laughs> um, then secondly is oh I can't do this it's too loud. Here's my thoughts about the Samyang 300 million. <laughs>